The Warriors replaced unaffordable departed free agents in Gary Payton II and Otto Porter Jr. with Dante DiVincenzo and Jamichael Green. But maybe more notably, after being cut by the LA Lakers, Gate City High School legend and the Texas Tech University alumni Mac McClung was given a summer league opportunity with the Golden State Warriors. And running with the opportunity given to him by President Bob Myers, McClung had the third highest points per game average, only behind Kaminga and Moody. McClung made over 50% of his 2.4 three-point attempts while also leading the dubs in assists. That production paid off as yesterday, the pass-first, above-average ball handler, and underrated shooter officially earned a roster spot for 2022-23. Meanwhile, the Paul Pierce-esque Moses Moody became the Summer League scoring champion with 27.4 points per night. In a redraft of the 2021 class, Moody would debatably be a top 5 pick. Whether it's the clear development from Moses, the fact that the Dubs just stole McClung from the Lakers, or how they took a talented shot creator off the free agent market in Dante DiVincenzo for a cap hit of just $4.5 million, as you'll find out, That's just a fraction of the talent they should have never let the Golden State Warriors steal for 2023. Before continuing, please go follow at Hoops on Instagram for reels like this one of Stephen Curry's finals domination. I post videos like it on Instagram every day, so go check it out. That's at Hoops. Also, please leave a thumbs up on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Last but not least, help my channel on the journey to 100k by hitting the subscribe button. The content is all written, recorded, and edited by one man, that being myself, so I greatly appreciate your support. Automatic Porter Jr. is now a member of my Raptors, the young glove Gary Payton II is now a Blazer, and Professor Big Shot's Nemanja Bjelica went back home to play overseas. After winning a championship, it seemed like the Warriors' front office was getting complacent by letting go of such crucial rotation pieces. Realistically, if you think about the reputation of OPJ, GP2, and Belly before they became Warriors, it was fairly similar to what people thought about Dante DiVincenzo and Jamichael Green. The Warriors' system allows players to make the most of their potential with all the space created by the NBA's best big three in Steph, Clay, and Dre. I broke down Dante DiVincenzo's impact in this video. Go watch that after you finish watching this, but before getting to Mac McClung, let's quickly break down the eight-year NBA veteran stretch big out of Alabama in Jamichael Green. The 6'8", 240-pound forward had a down year shooting the ball last season as he made a career-worst 26.6% of his deep-range shots. However, considering Green made an elite 39% of his threes the year before, the former Nugget, Clipper, Grizzly, and Spur could be due for a bounce-back season in the Bay Area. In his prime for the Grit and Grind Grizzlies, Jermichael at one point averaged 10.3 points per game over 55 outings, which was only back in 2017-18. In the Warriors' split-action, pin-down-based offensive system, Green's 1.4 assists per night during that 17-18 campaign for the Grizz proved that he's importantly shown some life as a playmaker. Overall, though, his floor spacing is going to be really crucial at the four spot. The inspirational journey for Mac McClung continues, as personally, I've watched YouTube highlights of this kid since he was in high school, and it's great to see him fight his way onto a roster. After being the G League Rookie of the Year, the former Red Raider deserved a promotion, and I'm thrilled McClung's getting the chance with such a stable organization like the Warriors. The Lakers and Bulls didn't give him a real chance to thrive in the NBA last season, But Mack's pro-level contract became a reality after he averaged 13.4 points, 4.8 dimes, and 3.6 boards in 24.4 minutes per game during the summer league. Of course, the Warriors already have a ton of options in the backcourt with some guy named Stephen Curry, along with Jordan Poole and now Dante DiVincenzo. But with McClung's ability to make sound passes, whether it's an entry pass, a drive and kick, or one of his many naturally gifted flashy dime droppings, Max facilitation should be extremely valuable in the dub system. Assuming the kid earns his way into Steve Kerr's rotation, which is easier said than done, the flurry of capable spot-up three-point shooters for the Warriors should allow McClung to do the majority of the ball handling when he does get out there on the floor, 
it may be a good idea for Kerr to experiment or even heavily play McClung throughout the season, maybe in Gary Payton the second's minutes, because he would take a ton of the pressure to manufacture shots off the dribble from Curry and Poole. If he gains the coaching staff's trust, Mack's quickness and IQ handling the basketball will come in handy. In terms of his shooting, as I mentioned, McClung made an incredible 50% of his deep-range shots in Vegas. That shooting is a great complement to his facilitating, as Mack's capable of spacing the floor out and keeping the defense guessing because of that stroke. Question is, can McClung provide the adequate defensive value to stay on the court? I think the answer is yes, because from the looks of it at the pro level, he's not getting exposed defensively whatsoever, and Max got solid instincts on this end as well, plus he's a well-rounded athlete, so I really don't think he's going to have much trouble on defense. Regardless of how many minutes he gets, McClung provides great internal competition for Dante DiVincenzo, as those two are going to be fighting each other for playing time all season, which will ultimately make them better. Then, there's the most noteworthy Summer League revelation for Golden State, the obvious progression from Moses Moody. Of course, Kaminga's also going to be dominant, and John was broken down in my last dubs video, but in Vegas, there's no denying it was Moody time. Moses is a shockingly skilled ball handler for his 6'5 frame, and his footwork when shooting off the dribble resembles a point guard. After drawing the defense and dropping it off, Moses has the awareness and shooting mechanics to relocate and swiftly catch and release, a playmaking and shot executing wherewithal, which has led me to compare the kid's upside to Paul Pierce. Whether or not Moses develops into that type of Hall of Fame talent is a completely different story, but nevertheless, his nifty, polished, and balanced finishing around the cup, in addition to the abilities I've already mentioned, make him more than capable of becoming that type of player. A scary thought with the Dubs personnel already in place. But it's not just Moody who's proving himself as a steal despite being a lottery pick who's in the Warriors organization. Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson were also top 14 selections who should have been taken much higher in their respective draft classes. The Warriors organization has made a habit of making draft robberies. Just take the selecting of future DPOY Draymond Green in the second round. History tends to repeat itself. Who between any of the Warriors new or young players excites you the most? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. The top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so compete in Community Speaks by leaving your response. Shout out to Apex Prime, who answers last video's question by saying the Raptors 2022 ceiling is the conference or NBA finals, also adding their floor is the second round. 